Hi everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts. I've got a one sheet wonder for you today. It's a one sheet folio that you can make from one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock or designer paper as we call it. You know the stuff, it's like thicker than paper, thinner than really tough cardstock and this is what we can get for it. We're a bit of clever scoring and cutting. Yeah, now you can make this as simple or as complicated as you like. You can see I've not gone to town on decorations because the paper itself is so gorgeous. We've got little pockets on the inside and I've just popped some cutter parts inside. You pop in whatever you like. Maybe you send in it as a birthday present. You could have a card in one. You could pop a gift card in other. Bit of, bit of folded stuff, bit of money. I've just put a little thing there that says crunchy leaves. So we have got some leaves somewhere. Yeah, look, crunchy leaves. And it folds out and you can fit three tags in. These are very simple. They just measure three inches by four inches. I wanted them to stick out of the top. And yeah, so that one's plain. I've not decorated it. It's got checks on one side. I've made sure they've got colours that you can write on. Like I say, you can add more pockets. I've designed it so that it will expand and accommodate it if you do decide to put more pockets in. I haven't with this one. Who knows if I will with one we're going to make now. Right, I love that little closure I've come up with. And I've done something you won't see me do often on this channel. Because it's usually about keeping it low profile to fit in a junk journal. I've popped my embellishments up on some foam pads. And yeah, I even cracked the buttons out. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. So, let's show you how I did it. Right, the paper I'm using, as I said, is Hello Pink Autumn by Prima. I'm just going to get the big paper pad. It's not all going to fit in shot, but there you go. You can see it. And I've already chosen which paper I'm going to use today. I'm going to use that sheet. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's pink, it is autumn, it's got roses, it's got butterflies. It's just perfect for me and I did receive this as a gift. So thank you very much, Pamela. I, I, I absolutely love it. So that's the page I'm going to use. Now I have gone ahead and I've already cut mine up to show you. I've got a little plan of how we're going to cut it here. I hope you can see that. So that is our 12 by 12 sheet. First I have cut it into three pieces that measure four inches by 12. I've done it horizontally because we want all these pieces to be facing up. I'm just going to do this like a jigsaw now just to show you. I'll probably get wrong pieces at wrong places but just to show you what I did. Just put your plan there woman, you've got to have a plan. So yeah you can, you can see what occurred now can't you. This is just so I don't have to get a big chompy chopper out on the table. So we've got one piece that is four inches by 12 by cutting a four inch strip off the bottom. Then we cut the remaining piece into two four inch strips. And on one of them, we cut a piece off that measures four inches. And then on the remaining one, we're gonna cut, cut that piece off that measures four inches again. And then we're gonna cut that in half. So it measures two inches by four inches. I'll just crack the prototype out again because that then becomes these pockets yeah if you wanted your pockets on the bottom cut that straight across if you wanted your pockets to be diagonal in fact I'll show you my very first prototype of this yeah I just cut them diagonally I cut that little corner off and popped an extra pocket there there's quite a few different things you could do with those inside pockets I might do the one now with pockets. Now I've already cut that so I won't do it different. You'll do it same woman won't you? Yes you will. Right enough waffling let's get on with it. So yeah cut that up, use your, your trimmer, use scissors, use anything you're going to cut it up with. Then once we're at that point I'm going to bring my scoreboard in and you can get away with the small scoreboard for this. So the first thing we're going to score are these two pieces that measure eight inches by four and it's very simple we're just going to score those straight down the middle at four inches <laughs> here it is i've got all my tools out on the table ready that's usually when i can't find them so four inches straight down the middle straight through that flutterby 
Now the second piece, we're going to do exactly the same again, score it straight down middle at four. I'm just going to check I scored there at four. I often make mistakes with this scoreboard. Yeah, I did. I don't know why I want that to be number four. I need to cover that up. I had it covered up once. It's four bar. I, I did know what that size were, but I forgot. And I'm very good at scoring on that instead of the number four. If I were buying this scoreboard again, I wouldn't buy the Martha Stewart for that reason. You can get loads now that are exactly the same. Anyway, stop moaning about your scoreboard and go on with your scoring, woman. Get the, get the map out. Get your map. So, that's those two pieces scored. Now this piece, pop it in again. And I'm going to score at three and three quarters. Then I'm going to score again at three and seven eighths, which is the next eighth along. And then I'm going to score at four. So we've got three score lines, all an eighth of an inch apart. Then I'm just going to turn it around and do exactly the same from this edge. Score at three and three quarters, score at three and seven eighths, and then score again at four. There we go. I think I may put a little bit of ink on this one so you can see the score lines. Do you know, I'm struggling to see them. If I don't get my head right over, I don't think I'll be able to see them. So I'm just going to do that <coughs> excuse me i've really i've been made up with it for a few days so i'm sorry if i stop and cough so if you're wondering where i've been that were it i didn't even have energy to come and do any comments i felt sick looking at screen so you can see my score lines now a little bit better and i'm not going to ink the whole thing but i don't think just putting this little bit of ink here will there we go sorted so we've got that now now i'm going to fold it i'm not going to crease any of these score lines we're just going to fold one over and one over again oh i may have to make this the opposite way around to the prototype yeah i made the prototype flap go over that way but look at that we've got the butterfly there i think this one yeah i may do it the opposite way yeah, remind me of that if I forget. Shout really loud and I might hear you. So we've done that bit. Now the next thing, I'm going to get my two pieces that measure four inches by four inches, four inches by eight. One is going to be stuck there. I'll just fold that in. And the, well, it's not white. The non pattern side, I'm going to glue it there. Now we've got the two marks at four inches and eight and I'm going to glue it between those two centre marks. I know this is hard to see. Let's fold that back that way, that's better. So that will then become, get this out woman, show them so they can visualise what's occurring. Yeah, that is then going to become that pocket. So what we need to do is put a little notching if you're doing notches i'm not going to make this too deep because i don't want to punch uh, top of that pumpkin off there we go and then i'm going to do another one here because that is going to be are we on screen yeah that is going to be the front of that pocket so i'll put a notch there oh <laughs> that shot up and down, down my top it always does that i don't know why now our next piece we'll fold that in half again so what we're going to do with that is we're going to glue it onto the back of there. So you've got that sort of thing going off. Yeah. And we don't need to punch anything out of that side or that side. So we'll do that. So then I'm going to grab my last little piece that measures four inches by four. And I'm going to punch a little bit out of the top of there. Again, not too much. I don't want to lose the whole flutter by. And that is going to stick on there. So we'll just move the back piece out of the way for now. And we'll get gluing these on. So grab my... I'm going to use my Barely Arts glue because it gives me a little bit more wiggle time. In fact, no, let's... I think I'm going to glue this into the backing page. Yeah, that's how I did it. I made the prototype yesterday, I'd forgot. Right, so... Yeah grab the barely art so on that bit there I'm going to hold it where the thumb notch is and hold it on the one I'm going to glue glue down that side along the bottom and up the middle 
Eee. Wee wee wee. There we go. Also in this tutorial, or video, if it's a tutorial, it's uh, look where I've been up to, isn't it? I'll show you. I did have someone ask in my comments, and it was a couple of weeks ago actually now. So I'm going to pop that just below that first crease mark. Yeah. This is why I'm, I'm favouring the Burley Arts sometimes. I'm just going to fold that and see if that one comes to just before crease mark. If I'm not sure... I'll fold it over and see. Yeah, that looks fine to me. So now I'll just press it all the way down. You can tell if it's straight by checking if that's lined up with that, although we're not going to glue that to that. We're going to come in with this piece now that doesn't have any notches punched out and we're going to glue that to the back of there. So I'm going to come in and put my glue I'll put my thumb there because that's where I don't want to put glue. Glue down there along bottom and upside. See, so yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to show you how to put eyelets in with those little metal rings on the back that help to reinforce the hole and strengthen them a little bit. I did ask someone, I did have someone in the comments ask if I would show how to do that. And I said I would, and then I didn't actually use them in my next video. Right, so that is going to glue to there. So to do it, I'm just going to place that down there. I'm going to fold that over and I want this edge to be just short of my crease line. You know the bumpy bit where you've creased it? We don't want to cover that up. We want to be just short of it. So then when we turn that over, that... Yeah, I think I need to just touch that in a little bit more. Maybe I've gone a little bit too short of the crease line. Yeah, that's looking good, I think. So that's our second pocket. Yeah. I'd cut this paper a little bit rubbish. So you can just see a teeny tiny little bit. Can you see on the top? That's not me having not glued it properly. That is when I've took the branding strip from the top. Mm, not on that sheet though, that's something else I've been using. When I've took the branding strip off the top, I've not quite to call the branding strip off. I don't know. Sometimes that happens when paper's not quite 12 inches. Anyway, stop waffling, stop waffling, just crack on. You said this was going to be quick and you're just talking for England. Now this one I'm going to glue on there. So when we open this out, we've got all the three notches all in a row, like three little ducks, which pleases me. I mean, you could put your notches at either side, whatever, whatever tickles your fancy. Whatever blows your frock up, as my mum used to say. I think we do have some weird sayings in Yorkshire, don't we? But I think it's brilliant how a lot of them have been taken all around the world. It's amazing when people comment about whether they've heard sayings or not. There's an awful lot of people in Australia, I've got quite a few subscribers in Australia now, or viewers, who say that comments are very similar there. Wee. There we go. I like it. Right. Oh, you'll notice on this one, I did ra a rounded. Um, yeah, I rounded the corners there. I've not done that this time. I, I decided I don't want to do it. I just want to round my extremities. I've, I've not forgot to do it. I decided I didn't like it. I wasn't perfectly happy with how these lined up you know after corners have been rounded because we were utching them just to one side at score line it didn't please me right so now i'm going to grab my corner rounder and i'm going to round i think i'm just going to use the small one as well the small side i'm going to round that one just to get rid of the offensive corners that one <coughs> that one That one, and then the other side of the cover. I mean, it's up to you. You round whatever you want to round. If you don't want to round, don't round. I'm a round, and, I'm a round person. I really am. So that's that. Now you've got to decide how you want it to fold out. I've got mine so that it pulls, but you could actually fold that in and then in again on itself. It does work like that. Yeah? So... 
I think I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep to what I did last time. I like it. It's sort of like a concertina effect. I like the ooh, let's pull it and get them all out at once. So that folds in, that folds over. Right, can you see here now? This is why I've not done any creasing of corners. You may I'm gonna have to do a little bit of trimming here. You know when you fold paper and on creases it can be a little bit out either way so I'm just hutching that up to that edge there and I'm just going to press this down with my finger then we'll see whether we need to trim any paper off actually no we'll get away without any trimming it looks better now so I hope you followed what occurred there yeah it didn't always line up perfectly and you just have to manipulate it a bit so now I'm going to put my inside pockets on and I'll just tell you how this closure came about. After I'd put the inside pockets on on my original one, I thought about this type of closure and I'm like, oh, I wish I'd put these on with brads. I wish I could just put a bit of strip of paper on with brads. And I'm like, oh, but I've put my pocket on, you'll see it. So I just glued it and put buttons on and I'm actually much happier with that than using brads. Not everyone's got the setter for brads, have they? I mean... It's the same one as the eyelets mostly. Uh, but yeah, not everyone's got them. You don't have to put an eyelet in a tag. You can still make the project. Uh, if I make the project where you have to use brads or an eyelet there, then you need the hole puncher. Whereas not necessarily. You can just tie a bit. Of, yeah, you can use a hole punch. Yeah, you can just use a paper hole punch. You can, yeah, put anything you want on top of a tag. Sure, at Waffling Woman. Yeah, I'm not on form today with waffling again. <laughs> right, I've got these two that I've cut in half. So I'm going to put these on as my pockets. Yeah, one there and one there. So I'm just going to come in and round these outer corners with the little one. That one says S. Yep, that's the little one. That one there. And I think this paper is even more gorgeous than the first paper. So I even less need to decorate this and maybe just put some words on. You could just put something on as a little tuck space. I think I'll do that. Right, I'm going to put semicircles on these. So I'm just going to take these two again. I'm going to put them back to back and I'm going to punch my semicircles at the same time. Then they'll be even. And that will be more pleasing. I don't know why, but it will. Oh, it's harder to punch though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just flew off. I don't know where they flew off. I'll probably find them a week next Wednesday. All right, and I'm going to again. I always do it's a habit that hold it where you don't want the glue. And that comes from making so many mistakes over years and back in the day. Yeah, um, my last video I asked if anyone would be interested in watching me make an eclectic journal from start to finish. After I said that, I've noticed quite a few people have made them recently. Not after, they've not made them because I said it. People have made them before. But I am still, I am doing it. I just wasn't quite up to starting it this week. But I've been gathering my bits and bobs. And I will be doing it. I'll be using an old book cover. For the front well not necessarily an old one because I'm gonna be grunging it up a little bit more and I've been gathering lots of my favorite bits and bobs um, I had a few people ask what eclectic is you google eclectic and there's still many definitions it's basically a journal without a theme it's just lots and lots of different bits and bobs all brought together some definitions say th it's things that don't match but when you're putting a bit of everything in something by definition it just matches doesn't it it just does so yeah we'll see how it goes it might end up looking like one at kids made it at school when they were five but we shall see right oh that is such pretty paper i really love this it's absolutely gorgeous so that's the two pockets on. Now I must remember that I'm going to have this one fastened the opposite way because I really want to see that butterfly. I really do. Now I'm going to show you, before I do tags, I'll show you how I did. In fact, no, do tags first, then we'll do closure. Right, tags. These were easy. I've got this pack of journal cards that measure six inches by four inches. So I love that one. 
fall be like up in autumn. Huh? That, I just find that funny. We don't have fall in UK, we just have autumn. And I know in the US you have fall. Yeah, I'm not sure what other countries call it autumn and what call it. I'm sure it's autumn in Australia, isn't it, if you even have one. Is it hot all? No, it's, I know it's not hot all year, but you don't have extremely cold temperatures everywhere like we do. I don't even know if there's any extreme cold in Australia. In fact, do you know what? I know nothing. I really am John Snow. Right, so, oh, I used that one in the last one, but I want to use it again. Well, that were perfect. Um, this time, I might fold this over and make it a double tag. Yes. Yes. If I show you the first one... I just cut it in half, yeah, and then I've got two tags, but because there is plenty of room in these, I'm going to fold that in half. I'm just going to grab me, uh, where's my scoreboard gone? There we go, it does help me fold stuff in half this, I like to use this edge. So I'm just going to fold that. I could score it, but it might not be exactly four inches, I mean six inches, it might not be perfect. So I'm going to do that, yay. And then I'll get the bone folder. There you go. So, do you know, I reckon you could make this uh, little journal without even having a scoreboard. The ones where they're eighth of an inch apart might be tricky. But you could perhaps just do one score line. <clears throat> I don't know. So, that's that one. Oh, I like that. Put your original one away, woman. And I think I'm going to have that one. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, a double one. Mm. I'll just put the hole on the front or the back. Yeah, so that it will open, obviously. Yeah, it wouldn't be a very good journal card if it didn't open, would it, woman? No, not really. So, grab these again. Let's find... A lot of them you can't really fold like that because it's got the... Uh, and he also said it's got the talkie in the middle, the words. Talkie. That's what you have on telly. I'll say chuck remote or turn talkie up. Put big light on so I can see. <laughs> Don't even. Right. Can you see a lot of them are like this? But that's what I said, they make lovely postcards. That one, that's just that will be a beautiful tag. I'm not gonna cut that one up. Right, this one, I think I could cut that down and still fit a tag in, but do you know, there aren't many of them that I can cut it off, really, but I've got enough paper left to do a bigger journal. Oh, that's beautiful, that one. I like that. Ooh, no, I can't fold that in half. Yeah, do you know, when I looked through these earlier, I didn't realise how many of them can't be cut in half. So it looks like I'm going to use the same three. Yeah. So rip that one out, missus. But you can always just cut pieces of the... 12x12 12 12 pages, or if you've got a 6x6 uh, pad, you could use that. These are the leftovers, the other, other halves from my first one, so I'll use that rather than cutting a new one in half, and I'll use that, and then I've got the double one for the other. Right, get your corner rounder. I rounded these with the medium one, because the rounding on it already was slightly rounder than the small one I've got. And not quite as round as the medium one. Oh, I've already done that. Um, I've, I've done that. You've done that. You've done it, woman. So let's... Now I'm going to put the eyelets on the top. So remember to show people how to put these on. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to use some of the gold bits on this. It's a rose gold, but I don't have any rose gold bits and bobs. But I'm going to use this gold one. These are slightly bigger than the three sixteenth of an inch ones that come with your crocodile tools. I'm going to get three little gold backs. If I can find them. If I'd have got them out earlier, I would have knocked them out the floor by now. So that's why I didn't do that. I know me. I know myself well. <laughs> so we've got three of those. Three eyelets. Grab your... I'm going to use my little crocodile hat. It's, it's just glue that. <laughs> I've half, half heartedly wiped off glue. It looks filthy. <gasps> wow, this new light just shows out muck up. I'm going to have to be tidier. So, I don't know whether to put it. I'm going to put it on the front. 
yeah I'm just going to put the tag on the front the tag top so I'm just going to use the 3 16th of an inch hole I explain this every time I'm using because I know I'd get quite a lot of beginners watch me I think I get a lot of beginners watch me and then they move on to uh, more advanced stuff so I think I just keep getting fresh beginners I'm not moaning about that that's just how it is isn't it right so I need to make that hole bigger because that won't fit in I bought these I don't know are they I don't know if they're four or five millimetre I really can't remember so I'm using that you can use a pencil but I remembered I got this ah, now it fits in so I've put that in now I'm going to turn it over because I've made the hole that's not falling out so I feel all smug and clever now this it has a convex side where it dips in and a convex concave side where it dips in and a convex side where it's raised up I put it that way so that your edges will be flush with the card yeah so it's slightly domed then you just do it like you would any other eyelet and there we have it what happens is the back of the eyelet it's not done it perfect but it's done it good enough and it's not sharp which is the main thing yeah you could run your finger around that all day and it won't cut you and yeah I quite like these slightly bigger eyelets they look I don't know they look a bit more expensive for some reason they look posher I'll just pop that in there we like now I'm gonna do these two now on again my prototype I put the holes on the others right at the corners so I'm gonna do the same so I'm just gonna put one of those backwards put them together and I'm gonna punch my hole I'm not going to put it as far towards the corner as last time I'm going to do it there yeah who says you have to have it middle or corner I don't know but I'm telling him no so we've now got one over on the left and one over on the right I'm going to use that again to make my hole bigger Whee. that deserved a wee didn't it pop that through that through again put these down with a domed side up convex I don't know I don't even know how I remembered them words oh I've got an extra one they were hiding like sheep on Minecraft you'll head in towards the sheep then all of a sudden it splits into two or three yeah <laughs> oh, I do I play Minecraft when I'm ill as well but I ain't even played much of that so like I can't focus on watching out right so, set that one. I feel like a whiny winger today. It's, it's even harder for me to press that. <laughs> oh, it's too much like hard work. Oh, there we go. Oh, I always do that with this. I press the lock thing in the middle of setting eyelets. It's my big chompy hands. There we go. It's not a fault with the machine, it's a fault, it's a user error that I want to do that. So we've got those two. Now I want to get some seam binding that'll match. Oh, that's from the other one. Right, I've got my tub out of the ones, <laughs> the ones that are in use. And I happen to have the perfect blue, I think, to go with that butterfly. So I'm going to use that. This is from Erin uh, at uh, oh this one was a free gift oh, I didn't even notice that thank you Erin I didn't even know that oh what am I like what am I like so this one's called raindrop it's absolutely gorgeous I'm guessing it's a new colour or it was when I got it a couple of months back but yeah I love this colour raindrop so it matches that butterfly so we're going to use raindrop on one tag and what am I going to use on the others I really need to get some more out <laughs> But I just, oh, I've got my favourite colours out. Oh, I like that. I think I might use that paler pink. I used the darker pink on this one because it matched that rose so nicely. But on this, it's there's not as much dark pink, is there? Let me use, uh, yeah, hot pink. No, we don't want hot pink. It's not a hot pink project, is it? This one. 
don't even know what this one's called, but I want that one, I think. No, I'll have that one. I'll never make a decision me to save my life, will I? Never. And I think I could do with a peachy one. Ooh. I could have two pinks. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. That goes really nicely with that. Because I've been naughty and took these out of the original package and I'm not really sure what colour that is. Oh, naughty girl. I'm, I can't find it. Is that it? No, it's not moss. No, I don't know what colour that is, but it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Just go and buy lots of colours and then you've always got one <laughs> right colour for what you want. Oh, I think they look nice without those three, don't they? Yeah, we've picked good. So, I think I will have... I'm going to have the pinky one in the middle. So I'll put that on this card. Yeah. Where's the end? I could put something on the end, but then I'd have to take that off the end to use it, wouldn't I? I would. Here we go. It doesn't take me... It doesn't take me above an hour to find end, does it? Now I'm just going to use yay much. Tie that in a knot and then I'm just going to cut it off. I don't even know how much I've used there. I would guess that I've used about 10 inches. Yeah, and then I'm going to tie the bow. I've left one side longer than the other as well because I apparently can't measure. Doesn't surprise me. It's nice. Oh, it's messy and I like it. Leave it messy, woman. She says, then she moves it and messes with it again. I've just said leave it messy and then faffed with it. But do you know what? Untie it and tie it again now. If it goes messy, leave it. It looked better before you started faffing with it. There we go. Yeah. That's a little bit too long. Snip it off. It'll go on some at that. Perhaps I'll make a snippet roll. I haven't done one of them for a while. And those tiny little bits are handy for that. So that will go in my snippet jar. Right, that's the pink one. So I'm having that one there. So that's in the middle at the front. Oh yes, I like that. Now we'll put a little bit of... I'm not going to tie a bow in these. I'm going to put this one on there. I actually think this one would have been better... The pink would have been better on here. But I'm all I'm all about what it's going to look like sticking out at the top now. And I'm just going to tie that. And that's all I want. I'm going to cut it that side of quick. So what am I left to use? Yes, that one that matches the flutter by. I do like that colour. Raindrop. Absolutely beautiful. So I'll put the link to Erin's... It's called My Scrap Cabin Shop. And I'll put the link in the description. Whee. And let's put these in. I'll have that one there. Oh, that's pretty. And then I'm going to pop this one here. No, that one has to go backwards, backwards. There we go. That's it. So we see the front there. Then when this is all closed up, that way, so we can see the flutter by, can you see? You can step them if you want. And you've got some at that side, that side, and some in the middle. Yeah, I think I like that better, not right on those corners. And, yeah. So... Put your seam bind into one side, missus. Get it off your desk. There you go. Semi-tidy. Right, now we've got to do the closure and decorate the front. And pop some bits in there. Right, very cheaty. I've been very cheaty. I've used a pack of the ephemera. Right, two ticks. Oh, here it is. I can see it. I thought I was going to have to go and get it back out. I thought I'd put it away. Right, I'll take this all out at packet because we don't want that plastic glaring at us. Oh, I've left a word and some flowers in. And this, they're just called, it's just ephemera pack, 28 pieces. 
I've used some in the other one. Now, I'm going to have that like that. Something's telling me I might, well, I don't know. That is so gorgeous. I don't even think I want to even put that on. I may just put a sentiment on like I did with the other. Oh, I like that. Sentiment. We've already got the butterfly though, haven't we? Sweater weather. Give thanks. Sorry if these are glaring with all the foiling on them. What there is, I'll show you this. In the 12 by 12 paper pack, you get this as well with more cut parts. They're a little bit more vibrant than these. So if you want it a bit more vibrant on front, you can always cut one of these out. I think I'm happy to go with this though. Yeah? Right, I will just pause, get rid of all the bits we've done with like this. And I'll be back and we'll do the closure and decorate the front. Two ticks. There we go. Oh, we have on desk now is what we need. Oh, and 50,000 buttons. Yeah, I went ahead and I also got out some buttons to use on cover. And if you're of a, yeah, if you've got a little bit of OCD and you don't like all this stuff mixed up, and listen. There you go. There's a quick ASMR moment for you. Yeah, and if my friend Bev's watching, ooh, I've still not sorted my buttons out, Bev. Yeah, my old next door neighbour, Bev, it used to freak her out seeing my buttons like that. So I do apologise if anyone else got freaked out by it, but I've gone ahead and sorted out some of the colours in which we need. I'm now going to do something very dangerous, and I've put them on the floor behind me with no lid on, because I've dropped lid. So that could be really disastrous later. Right, so yeah. I've got my buttons because I'm going to do exactly the same on the front again rather than mess about with brads and old punches and getting your tags stuck in pocket. I'm going to do buttons and I'm going to make my closure from this. Now what this is, it's the branding strip from Top at Paper. These Prima ones, they have them on every piece of paper within the pad and I'd cut it off. Usually you cut it off and do whatever with it and I thought, ooh, I can use it for my closure. So let me show you how I did it. I'm going to do my closure before I decide on what to stick on from because then I'll see what available space I've got. And we're doing it this way, opposite way. This is going to confuse me now, doing it opposite way to last time. It doesn't take much to confuse me, you know. I'm easily confusable. Right, so I'm going to cheat and I'm going to see how long that was because I honestly, I just eyeballed it. I didn't measure this piece of paper. So it is... It's three inches, so I'm going to cut a piece three inches and cut a piece... I'm going to go two inches because it doesn't need to be that big. I'll make this one a bit smaller. So off this, I'm going to cut one piece that's three inches and one that's two inches. Oh, I can use my little chompy trimmer for that. So I'm going to cut that one for the front fastener. So that wants to be two inches long. See, I put it in that way, woman. Oh, I'll tell you how wide this branding strip is. Because if you're using a paper that don't have a branding strip, you'll have to grab a scrap. It's basically, it's, uh, yeah, two, four, five eighths of an inch wide. But it could be a bit wider, could be a bit narrower. Yeah, and that's going to be that piece. Then I want to cut a piece that's four inches, so I'm going to cut that off the other end. Cut that to four inches then you've got that for something else then i'm going to grab my scoreboard again i've been just put it away thinking i don't need it silly woman so grab your scoreboard woman now for this bit on the front i did one two i scored it four times yeah i've, <laughs> I've put my score into well to one side not exactly away so just from the end, I'm going to score one, so that's like one and seven eighths. Score one, two, three, four, back down to the one and a half inch mark. Turn it around and do the same again. It's just easier to bend your card when it's got all these score lines in. One, two, three, four, all the way down to one and a half inch mark. Now for the closure, I scored it one, two, three, four times again on the end that's going to be stuck to the back. So I'm going to have, I think I'll have that end stuck to the back because I don't want that pair on the front upside down. That'd look a bit odd, wouldn't it? It really would. So put it that way. So I'm going to score one, 
two, three, four. Then I left a space. And this was, I left a space. And when I glued it on, the first score line again, I lined it with the edge of my album. Can't remember how much space I left though. I left, I know you can't see this because I can't see it. I'm going to start inking again. I left uh, three quarts of an inch nearly. So, <clears throat> yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to miss one, two, three, four, five, six out. So about there which is just over two and a half inches and then I'm going to score every eighth of an inch all the way to the end of this strip. Can you? It's wanting to curl already and this is why I do it because the piece of card just wants to curl round to make that closure. I'm going to turn it round this time because I can't get into edge with my chompy fingers. There we go. So there's just a little section there that's not scored and I did that why did I do that can I remember why I did that I just wanted the same amount of score lines at the end there that I had there just to match up that's the only reason if you want to score all the way along you can I just didn't want to I hope that made sense I think that's the most confusing part of the tutorial isn't it this so now I'm going to grab my corner rounder and I'm going to use my small one. Again, you don't have to do this. And if you don't have a corner rounder, you can just round it off with your scissors. Put it in that way. Might have been easier rounding this before I scored it. No, it's still worked fine. We So all the edges. Again, this is just a me not liking any, any sharp corners. I don't like them. It's going to confuse the life. And you know what? I'm going to turn that upside down. Yes. And then I can just copy it. Oh, oh, there we go. So first thing I want to do is glue this bit on the front. Now I'm going to have this slightly higher up than halfway because I don't want to cover my butterfly up. So it'll still work exactly the same as that one does. I'm just going to position it slightly differently. I'm going to put it that way so that pairs not upside down. And I'm just going to put some glue up to, not the last score line, the one before. So I'm covering up the one, two, three. Whee. So the first three eighths of an inch. I put far too much glue on there. So I'm just going to dab a little bit off with my finger. Then rub it in and then everything's going to be sticky for ages. So I'm going to pop that, I'm going to put it just at the butterfly's wing. This is not the side with the glue on, just at the top. And then I'm going to let that one set before I glue the bottom. Because if you can see here, what I've done is I've just, I've left a little bit of a gap so you can fit that in easy. Yeah? And I'll tell you what I did that with. I grabbed that's it's a stick for the rub ons and I just popped it underneath while I glued that down but that needs to be set first so while we're doing that I can glue this piece on for the closure at the back that pair is going to be upside down because it's going on that side you silly woman you could have had pair coming through but that would have been far too many pairs so I'm glad that happened you don't need that many pairs do you you so don't so on here I'm going to put glue all the way up those first four score lines and all along the flat bit and then I'm going to line that score line there with the first score line there and glue it on also making sure that it's going to be in the middle of there to tuck in get your glue on first so don't get too mad with glue this time the angry bo 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 baboons. The angry baboons are not coming to rip it off. No, they aren't. So that's that. I'm just going to. That's about the middle. And 
end. Put that on. Oops. There we go. That score line lining up with that. It's not an exact science, this. Oh, that's terrible. It's far too low down. How did I do that? It needs to go higher up, woman, quick. Slide your barely arts glue up before it sets. Whew. I'm so glad I didn't use art glitter glue for that. There we go, that's better. That looks straightish. So I've got it, it's a little bit sticky there now. I'm just going to rub it off. Ooh, there we go. And then when I've done, I will put some of my talc on there to get rid of the stickiness if there's any left. You can't see it. I think it's all rubbed off actually. Ooh, that were nearly a disaster. But yeah. That's straight-ish as well, straight-ish. There we go. So that's going to bend, come round and go through there. I think that might be a bit longer than we need. Now, that is now glued. So I'm just going to put that stick under there. Then I'm going to put glue again on the first three lines. I'm sorry if I'm over-explaining this, but again, I like to do these kind of tutorials so beginners can follow them. And I know a lot of experienced people just love to listen to me waffling. Right, so I'm just going to put that under there and glue that down. Yeah, make sure that gap lines up, just to please me. So can you see, it just leaves that little bit of a gap. I'm just going to hutch it down a bit. I think that, I don't know why that gap ended up bigger than the other one. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if you wanted to use two layers of that to make it even stronger, you could. But again, I'm conscious the baboons are not going to come trying to rip it apart. So that will then tuck under there. Oh, I like it. Yeah, you can make that. I think that needs to be made a bit shorter, doesn't it? I don't know why this one... I measured it. I must have measured it wrong. That's, it were never that long, woman. I'm just going to cut yay much off and round corners again. Me and measuring today. You can see why I don't measure much anymore. Because when I do measure, it all goes wrong. I can't be doing any measurements that are less than a full half of an inch or even a quarter of an inch. So that's that. Oh, that looks so much better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not in too far. And that is such a simple little closure. Right, now let's do the decorating. Close that up. Now, I want to, I don't want to put a big butterfly on like I did that one. I don't think this one needs it. That had far too much white space on this doesn't. I'm happy with that butterfly there. I do want to put some kind of sentiment on. That give thanks is now far too big. So I think we're going to end up going with sweater weather. I nearly misread that was sweaty weather. <laughs> no, it's not sweaty weather. I could put a little pocket on there, couldn't I? So sweater weather. But I'm also going to lift that up on some foam pads. Then that won't interfere with it. It can slide slightly underneath. Now, I've, I don't have foam pads. I've got this roller tape that I bought for doing shaker cards. So I'm just going to put that on, not not up to the edge, just, just like so, and like so. If you don't have any foam and you want to raise your embellishments up, just get some bits of scrap card and layer them up. Just stick as many pieces of card together as you want, like so, to get the thickness that you want. Yeah, and that bit, that'll be it. Do you know, before I stick this on, I'm just wondering if one of these might be better on this one. Autumn. No, it's a bit boring, isn't it? I like that blessings. No. No, it needs to be sweater weather. Sweaty weather. So I'm just going to peel those foam pads on. The backing off the foam pads, should I say. Whee. I don't often do this. It's something I used to do a lot when making cards. Or the fronts of mini albums. I don't tend to make the fronts of junk journals quite as 3D, but that might all change with my eclectic one. And I'm going to pop that 
there. I just like, there's something about having it raised up on foam pads. Right, I'm now going to put some buttons on like I did the other, because that's looking a little bit plain and I want to make a bit of a feature of it. So I've got out some greeny blue ones. I didn't really have many peach ones. I think that's the only peachy one I could find. Oh, hang on. Oh, there's a peachy and a pinky. They nearly match. What do you think? I don't know. Now, I want to put a peach one in the middle of the butterfly. So I'll stick to my turquoise blue ones here. I don't know if that one's the right colour. Oh, that's prettier. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll get two that match like I did for the other one, but that's not a big concern for me. Well, I think I like that paler one better. What else we got? What else we got? Got one turquoise blue one. No, that just does not look good. I think I might be happy. Swap those over. Hmm. No, I think that one needs to be smaller. Hmm. That's it. That's the ones. I'm going to go with those. And I do want something there, but I don't know what yet. What else have we got? A love heart. Oh, I like that. Oh, we've got another pumpkin. Oh, we could have that pumpkin raised up 3D. That would be nice. That's far too big. I'm going to put this on, but I also don't like quite how much white they leave around some of these. So I'm going to come in. I could have got my fussy cut scissors and made my life even easier. But why make your life easy, Julie? When you can make it hard. I just, I just can't be dealing with that much white on. I did that around the butterfly. Don't mind on the words, but... No one needs three inches of white around a cutout. It's just not necessary. Whee. I could really quiet when I'm fussy cutting. That's why you won't see me fussy cut very often on my channel. I like to have it done ready. Because you might think I've fallen asleep and fell off my chair. No, I'm just fussy cutting. You know, because I know, I know I do it a lot with channels. A lot of people listen to me while they're cracking on with someone else that are actually watching. So if I go quiet, yeah, you might think I fell off my chair. Oh, that's better. Yeah, and that's going on foam pads as well. I keep calling them foam pads. Foam tape. You've got foam tape, woman. You don't even know what you're crafting with. There we go. And I couldn't decide whether to put two more pieces, but no, that would just be too much like hard work, wouldn't it? So we'll pop that on. Oh, come on. You know you want to come off. It's not happening. I had to get my craft knife out when I was doing prototype. It's a blunt blade, don't panic. There we go. Very sticky, very sticky indeed. Well, I've just got my finger stuck to that. Oh, I'm terrible. And I've still have. I've done some nail cutting recently because I was doing housework when kids went back to school. No, I have that there. There we go. And I will now glue the buttons on. I'm going to use art glitter glue for this. I don't know what Barely Arts is like sticking stuff like this. But I know art glitter glue does it brilliantly. So, not too much. I don't want to put that much on that all glue starts to bubble up through holes. But obviously enough to hold it. Ooh. You nearly stuck that somewhere completely different, didn't you, woman? There we go. I've not really used many buttons for ages. So I thought, yeah, let's use a turquoise button on a autumn project. <laughs> Ooh, we like. And I think it makes a change to put a butterfly on a sorry, a button on a butterfly instead of some bling, don't it? Do 
There we go. Are you sticking your sticking? Oh, I'm quite happy with that. I like it. Now, I can't open it and do anything else inside until them buttons dry. So I'm just going to pause it, put all these other buttons away and I will be back and we'll just do a bit of faffing inside and then we'll be done. Right, they seem dry enough now and it really has only been five minutes. So let's open this up. And again, I'm not going to do much inside here. I'm going to pop some of the cutter parts in the pockets because they are blank on back and can write on them. So this one would be ideal to give us a Christmas card really with a gift card in. So we've got a pumpkin in I'm going to put that in because it's so pretty. I really like that. And then I just want one of the words. I think I might just put autumn. No, that's a bit... No, I don't like that. I don't know why that's even in. And I don't want hot cocoa. Or do we want hot cocoa with our pumpkin? Not really. So it's going to be blessings or living the pumpkin spice life. <laughs> no, I don't like that. I'm going to go for the blessings. So sending some blessings back to all the people who send blessings to me in comments. Yeah, I like that. I'm not raising that up because it's on the inside. We don't want to add any unnecessary bulk. Then we've got more room to add notes and photos and tags and bits and bobs. So, we'll best get this in the right place first time because I've cracked open the art glitter glue. Don't pan upside down. I'm just going to lift this up towards... I, I can't bring myself to put it on Katie Cornered like that, or can I? Oh, no, it's got to be straight. It's got to be straight, I'm telling you. No, nope, I can't do it. Straight-ish, but not totally Katie Cornered. It's not quite in the middle. Yeah, that's as unstraight as I'll get with these. I feel I need to put that little heart somewhere. Oh, I could punch a hole in it and make a little dangle off front with it, couldn't I? Yeah, let's do that. Right, I'll get one of these out again. I'm just going to punch. That's a big hole for a little heart. But, hey-ho. I could have got my little uh, eyelets out. I could have messed with settings on my crocodile, but I think I might have been asleep by the time I'd done that. Never mind you. That's a very big hole, but okay. Looks good. Ooh. Got one of these hanging about. Yeah, I'm just going to pop it on with some more seam binding. It'll be cute. There we go. Where's it go? It's there. I thought it had gone that way and fallen up floor then. Silly woman. You could write who it's to on there. Could be a little tag. So yeah, I'm going to leave that at that. I can't bring myself to cover all this yumminess up. Like I say, if you want to put photos on, if it's a little mini album, you can. But I just can't do it. That can go in there. Can I put... I could put another eyelet on there for it to dangle, but I'd rather put it here. Yeah, let's put it there. So I'm going to punch a hole there. Ooh, that I can just get it in. Oh, was I going to do it on the back? No, I can't do it on the back page. It's got to go there. There we go. Put that a bit bigger. It's very dangerous, this, these last minute punching holes in things we're having. So, <laughs> about the whys and wherefores but yeah, it's worked we did it don't squash your sentiment on the front though woman that would be there we go that's lovely hmm. little impromptu dangle so, what colour shall we use? There isn't really any green on that. Is that a bit too green? I don't know. No, I'm going to use that. There's green on the other one. So, cut off. 
I'm going to cut off how many inches is that? That's about eight, nine inches. I'm going to put that through. And I'm going to tie that. There we go. And then I'm going to pop that through and tie it again. And it's just another little frou-frou bit hanging out the top. Then that can dangle there. Yeah, that's cute. And why not? little knots with big chompy fingers don't always work very well there we go tight tight so the knots not too huge there we go maybe I should have tied knot on the other side what if I can pull that knot through all oh. There we go. <laughs> she did it. That's it. I like that better somehow. There we go. Right. So thread that in. We've got an impromptu little heart dangle. Probably better on some string than seam binding. But I like it. So that's the one we've just made. That's the prototype. Even with all my waffling, I've made it in an hour. So you can definitely make one of these in less than an hour. I'll just put this here once more if you want to take a screenshot. Uh, but the measurements will be up on the screen as I do it. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time with the start of my eclectic journal. Thanks a lot. Bye.